Hi, welcome to All Scale Slot Cars. I'm Dennis, and go Florida Panthers in Game 6 tonight, Stanley Cup Finals. Um, yeah, I just want to make a quick update to this track. This is my HO track, and this is something that I never really thought I was going to do, honestly. I'm more of a set it and forget it kind of guy when it comes to these tracks. I like to get something how I like it and, and just run it into the ground, keep it up for a long time. You see my Carrera track has basically been the same for years. And this is what I intended with this. I wanted something that I enjoy and just to really get the most out of for the longest time. I'm not one to change up tracks and try and experiment. Um, I know, you know, a lot of people are like that and that's fantastic. You can enjoy different tracks and really get make the most out of your hobby. So I understand that completely, but that's just not me. I like to get something set in stone and just like a permanent track and just and just have at it for the longest time. But, uh, you know, I've found and this is something to be aware of that you can never quite actually get how you want it in the first attempt. There is some tweaking involved and I, I've discovered that and especially not just the track, but the people who are racing on the track are huge, you know, influence on what what becomes of it. And uh, you could see the adjustments I've made. If you saw my track before, uh, it's basically all the same and it's a four lane track it auto world afx race masters you know combination of track which is basically the same but everything is basically the same as it was um i did have this section here now everything i i still have the same i love this sweeping curve uh, i took out all of the there there are no 160th those sharper turns, the more common curves. I, I don't have any of them in my layout. I didn't want to do that. I wanted more of a, a sweep to everything as much as I could anyway. And um, so in this section here, I had the track split off two by two here. And the inner lane here would, would make a different little path around this section and then come back together again. And that was nice. I, I like that. But um, I discovered that, you know, I do have some cars that I will be uh, not just racing, but uh, practicing or or just just enjoying that are wide. I'm not talking about the AFX race masters wide. I'm talking about like the Marchon planes. If you saw one of my featured videos on flying slot cars, they're very wide. They take up, you know, two lanes. I should have brought one out here for this. But you can't drive them. You can't, whatever you call them, uh, pilot them on on a two-lane track, really. They're going to hit stuff, and it's it's not a pleasant experience. You really need to have, you know, maybe if you have just one of them you're running around, have one of the middle lanes or if you're having a two car race, you know, separate a lane. And that that's probably even handy if you're racing the AFX Race Masters, they're making those large cars that pretty much touch or knock each other off in the turns because they're so so wide now. Um, so it, it's almost a necessity these days if they're not going to change up the track to, and make them make the track wider, lane space or wider to to have to go with the four lane track and this way you can have a one lane separation on a two lane on a two car race um so it's almost a necessity i would say uh if nothing happens in the future to just at least put up a four lane track and so with this i i saw that i wasn't able to uh, pilot those vehicles around the track when it came to this section that was split off unless I took off the guardrails and the guardrails aren't really a necessity too much uh, on some of my cars but on some they are so I kind of need to have them up and uh, until I can make some kind of borders um, so I wanted to put this back together and get a really true feel of it being a four lane track because that separation in itself was kind of taking away the experience of four lanes it was it felt i don't know it felt more of 
I don't know. I can't explain it. It was a, the combination of two lanes into four lanes. It, it just wasn't working well with me, and I, I didn't like that. So that was, that was the major tweak that I had here is to combine these all together. I know that the lap distances, the lane distances are unequal, but, you know, I'm, I'm not holding professional races here right now. If anything, we can give inexperienced drivers the, the faster lanes, the quicker lanes, the easier lanes or whatever to, to balance things out. Or there's always, you know, you, you race a certain time or distance on each lane and alternate lanes, alternate drivers and whatever, alternate cars. So there's ways to get around that. So I, that doesn't concern me at all at this point because mainly it's just me or, you know, I have my grandkids come over and they love to race all the time. As you know, if you watch this channel, they, I, I, I don't feature them. Their parents' wishes are not for them to be on, uh, be recorded or photographs. And I completely understand that. And so we, we don't do that. So unfortunately I can't, um, bring you any of those races but that's totally understood and that's fine so um, yeah so they're they're the primary races on here and although we did have our 23 year old niece come by and visit us the other day and she came and um, watched the the action on the slot car track and she had she had no idea what this was she had never heard, never seen anything about that. She didn't know what a slot car was. This like blew her mind. And my grandkids were eager to show her. So we came in here and we did some racing and she picked up a controller and she was fantastic at it. You know, she knew what she was doing right away. Didn't have any, didn't have any issues and she loved it. And so that really goes a long way in showing that people need to be, um, <laughs> uh, shown this hobby they they need to be exposed to this stuff because once they do they fall in love with it and not only this but afterwards we took her into the the Carrera digital track room and she picked up right where she left off here she loved it just was like blown away by the experience and was a really good racer from the start and so I think you know the younger generation they are they are more apt to be very good at this right from the start and which is a fantastic thing and so I'm getting away from the issue right now <laughs> but what I wanted to say was with my grandkids racing now they're four and three and they've been racing on it since each was before they were a year old so they're very experienced in this but they're still at the point where they hold down the controllers all the way i'm you know i'm starting to you know get them a little bit into especially the the four-year-old to where the power gets turned up and to where he can crash and he needs to start actually driving and i'm not pushing it uh, I will never push anything. Everything that they do is on their own accord. When they want to come in here and they ask to use the slot car room and race, it's all great for me, but I'm, I'm never going to push them. I'm never going to encourage them. Let's go in the room. Let's race here. Let's have a race. I've never said that. It's them asking me and almost demanding of me <laughs> to, to come in here and, and race. So I think that's a great thing, and that's an important thing because l let it be on theirs. If, if they want to go a different way next year or whenever, that's fine. I had my moments with them, and that's great. But uh, for the time being, I'm really enjoying it, and they're loving it. But one of the issues that came up was um, now the both of the brothers are competitive with each other, and when they when they race here, so-called race, when they you know they hold their control all the way down and their cars go around, I have the the Auto World, um, you know the variable power, the variable voltage here. It goes from nine to twenty-four, I believe, and that's been very handy. And uh, that has been a, a lifesaver in that I could just turn this on and turn it at the very low power or maybe turn it up a little bit so their cars don't struggle around the track and they have a nice experience and that's all they want. But the, the problem arises when one of the brothers, his car is a little faster than the other one. Now that other brother realizes he can't keep up. He's getting lapped and he's not happy. 
and he he'll start complaining now they each have done this to where my car's too slow my car's too slow or you know maybe one wants to one run run one car and that car is extremely slow compared to the other and if you try to turn up the you know turn that up on one car the other car will go flying off the track all the time and that's been a problem and that's been a a source of a little bit of frustration in trying to get it right for both of them and it's great for, with the digital track because you know when they start complaining about that that my car's too slow it's like okay i've solved that by putting ghost cars on the track and so the ghost cars really take away um, their feel of not having a fast car because they're passing ghost cars and they're not paying attention too much to where their brother is and what their brother's doing um, so that that's fantastic but there's no chance to have ghost cars on this HO track so I had to figure a way around it and it got to the point where it was it was nice to have them drive but I, I couldn't go any further with it I felt I think we should take the next step and that is to get each of them a variable power supply and have their own to run on and um, I, uh, I thought that would be the best way to go because when one complains his car's too slow, I'll say, okay, I'll turn this up for you. And now you're kind of on your own. If you start crashing, then we're going to have to turn it down a little bit. And they're both agreeable to that. You know, they know, they understand. They don't want to be crashing on every turn. So we'll say, oh, no, too fast. And we turn it down a little bit to where it's just right, to where they have a comfortable lap and, you know, race-worthy lap. So that was the, the the first step is to get each of their you know own now th since this is a four car a four lane track i figured i had to do that with all four lanes i can't just do two and also um i want to prepare for the future while i'm doing this and to get it set up to be a more of a professional feel if they're going to keep doing this as they get a little older you know at the way they're progressing at this maybe by a year or two if they're still hanging in there with it they'll probably be at the stage where i wanted to get more of like professional driver stations and and really really make this work at, at a level where it'll it'll be not actually professional level, but but really a, a good solid HO experience for them, and and for myself. And if we you know if we have guests come over and they want to race adults, it's more of less of a, a toy and more of what would be a, a good experience for an adult. And so that was the first step is to get the variable power supply, and I did look into um, now we had the the auto world uh, wireless system and that was great and I thought I think we need to get more professional driver stations and have it wired uh, the the issue of the wireless that was very handy when they were younger and say this was on the floor this was set up but when it's here I noticed they both come and they sit down and they're very content to sit in their stools and they just sit there and enjoy their cars going around and, and watch the view and enjoy it. And they never get up and run around the track. So I said, you know, the wireless, in my case here, is not an issue. And, you know, when we come over, when the adults have anything going on, we don't, nobody's running around the room. Everybody's pretty, you know, pretty responsible for their their area. So I said, the wireless is not really an issue we don't need to have wireless and so that would be the first step in getting it to be a professional level with driver stations so i looked into auto world since we're getting you know we have these auto world variable power supplies now the afx and auto world are very interchangeable their tracks are interchangeable for the most part everything is interchangeable and that even includes their terminal track this is the afx race masters terminal track and as you could see it's the dual power so each lane has its own power supply so no more issues of even if you know these auto world controls were i mean power supplies were very good and 
controlling remember the old days where one car would get a boost when the other car would jump off the track and then that car would crash because now this is getting all the power in this lane and all those issues it, there really wasn't an issue i didn't i couldn't detect anything maybe there might have been but i didn't never detected anything so that wasn't a problem but i didn't want any issues with that at all so you don't have to get all of these but i had the four power supplies so i figured we'll hook one up to each lane and get two of these afx dual power track so this way each lane has its own power never have to worry about that um, and you can you know set the power to whoever whoever's on that lane can set it to whatever they prefer and just have at it no more complaining about too slow or, it's, or the other one's going too fast or anything like that so we just need four of these all together so you just need two of the dual power supply uh, the dual terminal tracks I have one on each end and there's two driver stations here and it's wired right now this will be an upgrade in the future but this is going to last for a little bit now so everybody's got their own controller at their power station there's two on this end and then one here and the other one can man the middle of it here so everybody's got their power station now like I said this is just a temporary thing with these auto world control controllers which are not the greatest uh, I'm just not really happy about them that's the standard controllers that you get in a set and I had these around so I plugged them in they plug right into the AFX race masters no problems at all no issues they're very interchangeable so just always keep that in mind and I think the auto world is much better because the AFX has that tri power uh, I think it's 8 volts, 12 volts, and 22 volts or something like that, which I, I've never had one of those, but it seems like it's a nice uh, thing. The only problem is 8 volts is nice where this goes to 9, so that extra little volt less might be enough to keep someone on a track who, you know, is just learning or just wants to drive around and not deal with, you know, playing around with the controller that 8 volts instead of the 9 volts that Auto World has might make a difference. I don't know. But that's the only advantage I see with the AFX. Uh, then you have to switch it to the 12 volts, which might be too much. It's probably too much for someone who's learning that on some of the cars, maybe the Race Masters cars can deal with that and go around nicely on 12 volts and not have to worry about crashing or anything or deslotting. But some other cars may have issues with that so that's that's meh. it's one of those deals and and the 22 volts would be like for racers who are very professional and don't mind crashing all the time if they can't handle it but the auto world is in my opinion much much better at that and you can dial it in anywhere you like from nine all the way up to the 24 so you're good there and you can let it sit there you don't have to worry about resetting it you can keep it there if that's what your comfort zone and you have the same car I mean every car you can adjust and do your thing and it's an individual experience now now the auto world controllers like I said I'm not happy with them this is this is a temporary thing I do have the DeFalco uh, controllers and um, I'm not going to introduce them to the grandkids right now because while they are very responsible with cars, um, now I, I don't let them drive, you know, the 60-year-old, 50-year-old, 60-year-old plastic cars, the AFX, the, you know, the, the, the cars I don't want them to touch, I don't introduce them to. Those are just for my own personal enjoyment running on the track I, I don't race those cars at all if I have them out it's because it's fine-tuning day and and oiling day you know which I'll do periodically on some of the cars in rotation that I have so um, yeah those cars I they're they're not introduced to so but the cars that they do race the, I have a, a big box of cars that that I allow them to race as far as HO um, and they could pick and choose from whatever they want and have at it with those cars. But they're very responsible, and they don't let cars fly off the track. They're they're good about letting the you know getting just enough power to make them happy without being like 
crash <laughs> demons. So uh, that's not an issue. So they they enjoy the cars. And um, what was I getting? I lost my train of thought here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they're very responsible with the cars. But as far as the controllers, they are kids and they are three years old and four years old and they have a tendency to drop the controllers every so often. There's a controller that drops the con the Carrera controllers. I could tell you from experience that these, those can handle quite a few drops. They've been dropped quite a few times to the floor, to a tile, hard tile floor and have survived no issues at all also don't worry about dropping those um, or maybe i've been lucky but they've they've been able to handle it um, and the auto work controllers they have had a few drops and they've survived too so i could speak for them but i didn't want to introduce the defalco controllers especially the ones i have have the electronics on the outside on the top and i i don't want to introduce them just yet i mean not only for their sake but for mine too you know i'm i want to have more experience on how i am racing with other people and how i am going to be and even other adults before entrusting those controllers um, to someone especially children who are prone to drop so for the time being, I have these Auto World controllers, which they were here the other night racing, like I said, with, with our niece, and they were having a great time. We we're all having a great time here. And these work just fine to hold it down, and you have your controller speed to, you know, to set your, your voltage on and, and just have at it. Now, I know there's other ways you can, you can use, you know, different, you know, different power adjustments like uh, uh, dimmer switches or or a variable power supply hooked up and there's other ways to do it so you don't have to go with these but I, I did happen to have four of these so that's what's being used and they came in great and so in the in the future I plan on making this more of a stable a real driver stations on each of the four corners and We'll have some wood set up here and we'll cut off these, the cords to these, and that could be tossed because we're just going to use the wires to plug into the station here. And then the, uh, the Falco controllers have the alligator clips, just clip it on. And then if anybody pulls away, it'll just take off from the alligator clips to the screw connection and you don't have to worry about the track lifting up. And that'll be, that'll be the future of this track. But for now, it's gonna stay with the auto world controllers until I feel they're ready for it and I'm ready for it. And then we'll move on to the next stage. So that's just a quick update on the track, on what's going on now. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. And thank you for, for watching. And um, yeah, uh, we're just having a lot of fun with this track. And we'll take this guy around here. See, I've got the power turned down so I can just have a nice smooth ride, not racing. And if I want the power turned up, I can turn it up and have a really challenging experience with this car. And just loving the track and Hopefully this is the way it stays for the longest time other than the driver stations upgrade which which needs to be done and um, Also, I have you know the the AFX uh, track clips that I clipped on uh, To uh, most of the sections here. I have areas where I didn't use the clips and Once I realized that this is the permanent permanent setup for this track this will be the way to go and I'm going to finish clipping everything but in the meantime I've had to make a couple of tweaks and it's been a pain in the neck I'll admit to get those those AFX clips in and out but once they're in and out then you're pretty secure they're they're very sturdy and uh, do a great job in uh, keeping your track together and I highly recommend those those clips and um, I remember back in the day back in the Aurora AFX days uh, the, when you would buy a set, they, they would supply you a few of those. And I remember I couldn't keep them in in stock enough and there was nowhere to go to get more. And so we had to just, as track would break, 
and it broke often. We wound up having less and less track to use because we didn't have enough clips to keep everything together and there was no other way to do it. And so uh, I'm very thankful that those clips exist. And they're, they're not very necessary on this track. Um, so I'm gonna see just what, uh, what happens in the future. But there are areas that I know I just have to clip a couple of pieces together because they do have a tendency to come apart just a bit. But uh, so far, nothing major. So that's, that's the experience on this track, a, a little update, something that I didn't anticipate happening, but just wanna keep you abreast of what you're looking at when you do have a track and um, some of the things that go on, some of the situations that can arise. All right, well, thank you for watching and have a great day.